Good evening, everyone. I'm going to give you just a couple seconds to get settled in our Zoom room. So it adds the thing on the thing. Okay. All right, wonderful. And if everyone will just check their mics and mute yourself for now, avoid background noise. Great, I think everyone is in. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. I am Dr. Sarah Hammond, Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies at FSU, and my job is all about student success. So I am pleased to be here today with a group of faculty and staff who are part of a nationally recognized program of living learning communities right here at FSU, and we are so excited to tell you about it. As we begin, I want to introduce Ms. Denise Mercer, um, if she'll wave. Denise works in university housing, um, and she is really key to making our programs run smoothly. So if you call or you email um, housing with questions about living learning communities, you are likely to interact with her. Denise and I work very closely with the faculty directors who oversee all 11 of our living learning communities or what we often call LLCs. And I'm gonna use that term a lot tonight, LLCs. So collectively, um, we hope to provide a good overview of what the LLCs are and explain how you as students can apply to them. We are definitely gonna take questions as time permit, permits and our group is kind of small tonight, so it will permit it. Um, but if you have questions that you wanna go ahead and put in the chat, we will answer those throughout as we go, but also at the end of my remarks and before, um, before I turn you over to our faculty directors. Um, because that really is, I think the highlight of this event is the opportunity to connect with those VIPs, the faculty, the LLC faculty directors who are with us here today. All right, so you've heard this many times before students and you're gonna hear it a lot uh, before you actually start classes, but it's never enough. Congratulations on your admission to FSU. You are truly among an elite group of students who have worked very hard and achieved high levels of success while being very involved in high school. Um, and that is amazing. But as your next chapter begins, it's time to think about this question. What will you do at FSU to connect to others and get the most out of that experience? And if you're wondering why your academic dean is so concerned about how you're gonna meet people at FSU, here's what you need to know and what your family members need to know. Students who find a strong support group um, of friends and mentors in college are more likely to graduate and more likely to graduate in four years. And that's true wherever you decide to go to college. But connection is so important to student success that FSU now requires every first year student to take what we call an Engage 100 course. Other institutions sometimes call this first year experience courses. We call it Engage 100 and living learning communities are an excellent way to meet that requirement. So we're glad you are here today. We know that you have a lot of competing demands on your time while finishing up high school, but some of these Engage 100 opportunities like LLCs are decided now. So we're glad that you're here today to learn more about that. All right. Personally, I think all new students should live on campus because it puts you right in the middle of everything FSU has to offer. But living learning communities are the platinum version of living on campus. And that's because they truly blend the academic and the social spheres to achieve the best college experience. So let's start with what they are, okay? Living learning communities are communities of student where communities where first year students live together on the same floor or the same wing of a residence hall. Plus, the same group of students take one or more classes together, sometimes called a colloquium course, um, and sometimes there are others, but they take classes together and they often participate in other outside of class um, activities related to the theme or the major of their living learning community. Um, so these LLCs are a great place. They often mean instant friends to our LLC students because students are interacting with others regularly. So they're bonding over shared classes and majors in common and interests that they have in common. 
But living learning communities are also an early connection to full-time faculty members. Um, and that doesn't always happen for first-year students, but you're getting connected to faculty directors who are full-time at the university and can unlock a lot of opportunities for you. And finally, I think the other benefit um, of a living learning community is that you are literally surrounded by highly motivated, high performing students uh, who share a lot of the same uh, values and priorities that you do. Um, I will tell you, I'm proud to tell you that 60% of our fall living learning community students this year earned a GPA of 3.5 or better. And that is amazing, 60%. And historically, more of our living learning community students are accepted into graduate and professional school. Um, so what I know as an academic dean is being surrounded by people who think about how to be successful academically and can support your success is really critical, especially in that first year of college. All right, so I want to assure you that there is a living learning community for every student at FSU, regardless of major or regardless of what your personal interests are. Um, so I want you to just quickly, I'm going to introduce these um, more specifically later, but just real quickly, I want you to see that we have five living learning communities on the right that are open to very specific majors. But the ones on the left in the left hand column are interest based, which means that they're open to students in any major, even though some of them are geared towards specific populations of students, which, I, as I said, we'll talk about a little bit later. But when you apply to a living learning community, we want you to apply to all of them that fit your interests because in that way, you will have the maximum opportunity to be selected to participate in one of them. And if you get an offer to participate in more than one, then you get to choose, uh, which is the exciting part. All right, so while the living learning communities are built around common interests and majors, the real curriculum, I would say, is college life. Um, and I think the photos in this presentation, which the faculty directors have sent me over the last couple weeks, um, really speak louder than any words I could share with you. Students in living learning communities have a lot of fun with each other and a lot of fun with their faculty. They are meeting new people, visiting new places, learning with hands-on activities, serving their communities, challenging their limits, and inventing their futures. They are truly taking advantage of all of the opportunities at FSU and beyond. So LLC students really connect with each other and their faculty in that first year, which means they have a great support system for the ups and sometimes the downs of college life, but then they are connected for life. And we hear great stories all the time, like that amazing faculty letter that got one of our alums into her top law school choice, or the living learning community internship connection that turned into a job, or pictures from weddings or alumni groups that still meet up or travel together. LLC life is a good life. All right, so we have a list of frequently asked questions. These are ones that we get all the time, so we thought we would just um, address these head on. Um, LLCs are such an exciting thing and such a good thing, it makes a lot of people wonder if there is an extra cost. But I'm glad to say the answer is no. Students who participate in living learning communities are paying the same rates as their non-LLC uh, counterparts living in the same style or same building type, right? Because we do have multiple rates for different types of housing assignments, but all of our assignments for living learning communities are in suite style housing. Um, and there is no add-on cost for all the incredible um, um, courses and um, programs that students are taking. No, nothing beyond the rental rate and nothing beyond course tuition. Um, a lot of students um, wonder if they can, um, if living in an, L if an LLC can honor their roommate request. Um, and I will say that this is possible, but I want you to pay attention to my if statements here, okay? It is possible if the student you want to room with has applied to the same living learning community, and it's possible if that person is invited to participate in that same living learning community, because they are in groups, they are housed together in groups by living learning community. 
Additionally, that other person needs to meet all of the deadlines and, and requirements that are put out there in order for the two of you to stay on track um, with that roommate request. Um, so keep that in mind. And if you have questions about that, you can certainly follow up with um, university housing. We also have a lot of students who would like to participate in living learning communities and the honors program. And you can do both. Um, I don't think you have to do both. You're going to get a lot, you're going to get a really good experience if you choose one or the other. But let's say that there is um, a themed LLC or a major LLC that you are very interested in. You are welcome to do both. Here is the uh, caveat though. Um, if you are going to be in an LLC, you need to live in that LLC or you won't be connected to the students, which is the heart of the program. Um, so you will need to, uh, if you are in honors too, you need to agree to live in the, L in the LLC. Whereas in honors, you don't have to live in the honors residence hall, Landis, to be a part of the honors program. So that's the caveat there. And finally, you'll probably wanna know what the application is like. Um, here's what you have to do, first of all, you must complete a housing contract first in order to access the application for a living learning community. And then the application is not overly complicated. Set aside about 30 minutes for it. There are four short essay questions. We would encourage you to customize the, the essay questions to different LLCs if you apply to more than one. And we do encourage you to draft those in a Word document um, or um, a Google Doc, something outside of the system and then copy and paste it into the system when you are ready to go. All right, um, as I said before, the first step is completing that fall spring housing contract and then you can go to the website that is on that screen um, and um, certainly click on how to apply for some of the details. Um, students should apply by the April 1st priority deadline for the best chance to live in an LLC and again, apply to all that are interest, uh, of interest to you. But after you apply, you've got to stay in touch with us. You've got to stay tuned in. I'll tell you how to do that. But the bottom line is you must accept your invitation before it is revoked. So uh, you don't want to uh, miss your invite to the party. So after applying, mark your calendar. Go back into the system, the application system, because you are going to want to check your status on April 27th. Um, again, go into that same website to see if you are invited to one or more of our LLCs and you have a short window of time to accept that invitation. So be sure to accept it um, by April 30th um, or as we said before, um, that invitation actually becomes null and void because we're going to offer that space to somebody else. So be sure to accept it. Now, let's say you log in and your status is alternate. We do set aside alternates because we do use alternates. In fact, all the way throughout the summer, we are co communicating with students who are classified as alternates. Um, so if you're an alternate, don't worry. Check back in on May 4th and see if you've been given um, an, an offer of acceptance at that point in time. That application is gonna reopen every Wednesday with new invitations as we entertain applications from alternates. So, um, you know, you um, if you have questions about that um, alternate process, you can certainly contact um, Denise in University Housing about that. Um, but you can stay in that alternate process um, for as long as you remain interested in um, obtaining a space in one of our LLCs, and we would indeed encourage that. All right, now I'm gonna pause there just to see um, if Denise Mercer would like to interject with any other uh, pointers about the application process because she is truly the expert on this. Well, the one suggestion I always give people is go ahead and put a reminder in your calendar for April 27th now, because as Dr. Hammond says, if you miss that step, there are alternates waiting and, and we're gonna pull back your invitation and offer it to somebody else. Um, and you can even put the, um, uh, the link that's on the screen, housing.fsu.edu slash apply LLC in your calendar reminder, if you have the ability to do that. It only takes about 30 seconds to just check in, see your status and accept an invitation. That is great advice. Thank you, Denise. 
All right, before we transition, I'm gonna pause. Um, if you have a question, you can unmute your mic and ask away. Um, otherwise, you can also put a question in the chat uh, that we would be happy to answer. No worries if there are no questions now. We're, we're gonna we're gonna be answering questions um, as we go. And um, and definitely Denise and I will be around and can answer questions um, throughout. All right, wonderful. Well, we have set up the rest of our time for you to spend in your choice of breakout sessions facilitated by each LLC faculty director um, and or any other representatives who can tell you more about each of these communities. But before we break up into that, I wanna tell you a little bit about each one of these LLCs so that um, kind of gives you some background so that you can make choices about which ones to visit. All right, so um, entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, Wendy Plant, go ahead and wave. Um, Wendy is our faculty director, and we want you to visit her if you are interested. Uh, visit if you are if you are an entrepreneur or an innovator interested in learning about design thinking to turn your ideas into action. Um, this LLC is sponsored by the College of Entrepreneurship, but it is actually open to any major. Exploration and discovery. Mark Ziegler. All right. Um, this is actually one of the broadest LLC themes, really applicable to anyone. And if anyone would encourage you to check out the Brian Hall Learning Community, I want you to know that exploration and discovery um, has in the past been known um, as Brian Hall, but we are using the theme along with Brian Hall this year because we're actually going to have two different living learning communities in Brian Hall this year. So um, visit the uh, visit Mark and Brian Hall if you want to connect to all the great academic career and involvement opportunities at FSU. Uh, Mark always brings in a lot of guest speakers. You might have seen uh, Lonnie Alameda and Sue Semero on the uh, cover picture, um, coaches for the women's softball team and the women's basketball team. Um, he brings in just a great array of speakers to that colloquium class. Next, I will introduce our FGen, first generation Knowles. This is our newest living learning community, and we are so excited to bring them into Bryan Hall to be co-located um, with exploration and discovery. So we want you to visit um, FGen Knowles if you are the first generation in your family to attend college. This LLC is connected to our nationally recognized CARE First Gen program, and it is available to students in any major. So meet with Lisa Jackson if you are interested. I am going to tell you about our Florence Immersion Program that is under the faculty direction of Charlie Panarella over in Florence, Italy, across the pond, so to speak. But he is not here because he could not stay up all night for this event. Um, this living learning community is open to first year abroad students planning to study in Florence, regardless of their major. If you have questions about this living learning community, you can stay in this main room and Denise and I will work with you to um, answer your questions. Our global and public affairs learning community, Dr. Eric Coleman is here along with Lauren Thornburg um, to tell you all about it. So visit if you are interested in understanding global issues and impacting a global society. I can't think of a better time uh, for you to be interested in this content. If this uh, community is sponsored by the College of Social, Sciences, Social Science and Public Policy, but it is open to any major who is enthusiastic about the topic. Um, and I am also pleased to introduce our social justice living learning community, which is under the faculty direction of Dr. Sierra Turner, but here this evening is Val Valerie Arias and Ashley Doling um, here to speak with you about it. Visit with SoJust if you are interested in developing or enhancing your leadership skills to create positive, sustainable change in your communities. The coursework for this community is part of the leadership certificate in the College of Education, but it is open to students in any major, as well as the certificate. 
All right, so now I'm switching gears here to focus on the LLCs that are specific to majors. Um, we, our engineering learning community is in its um, second year this coming year. Um, we want you to visit if you are majoring in engineering and you want to take on the global grand challenges of engineering along with Dr. Cassie Ernst from the College of Engineering. Our health professions learning community is under the direction of Dr. Angela Siegel and Dr. Michelle Garber, who are both here with us this evening. We want you to visit with them if you are interested in academic and career opportunities in a wide array of health professions. And you don't need to have your major all figured out yet, but this is an ideal place for planning to attend medical or dental school, physical therapy, physician assistant, and more. Um, so visit, take some time to visit with them. Music um, is another one of our living learning communities um, where uh, Dr. Michael Butler is the director, um, a professor in the College of Music. They are not here with us this evening for breakout rooms. Um, admission to this uh, major requires an audition, which is handled separately. So if you, but if you happen to be majoring or minoring in music or music theater, stay in the main room. And again, Denise and I can work with you to answer questions about that really vibrant community um, in Cawthon Hall. Our nursing living learning community is under the direction of Dr. Marsha Hartline, um, and this is ideal. We want you to visit if you are majoring in nursing. It's a great way to learn about the nursing profession, to meet the nursing faculty at FSU. There are a bunch of pictures from um, their events in, in this PowerPoint. Um, so, and, and it, this is an incredible way to gain some insight into the very competitive application process for admission to the major in nursing at FSU. And last but not least, least, I want to introduce you to Whimsy, Women in Math, Science, and Engineering under the direction of Dr. Susan Blessing, who is a physicist at FSU. Visit if you are a woman majoring in a STEM field and aspiring to be an academic and a researcher. And I want to be very clear, this is not for most pre-med, pre-health students unless your career goal is to become a researcher, because um, that is the path that these uh, Whimsy students are are on. So, okay. All right. Here's the, we're, we're now at breakout room time. Denise and I will stay here, but you should be able as participants to choose a breakout room to go into. Um, and you can visit more than one. So pop into a breakout room, visit for a little while. And if there are others on your list, um, when it seems appropriate, go ahead and move into another breakout room. You will not have to return to the break to this main room to go into a different breakout room. And there is no um, real need for you to return to the to the main room unless you have questions, anything that you want to ask um, Denise or me. Um, or someone who knows more about the housing assignments process. We can, uh, Sarah Dennis is here also and can help with those questions as well. What we will do is um, this session is designed to go till 7 p.m. at about five minutes till seven, we'll give you a warning so that we know, so that everyone is aware that those breakout rooms will wrap up. Are there any questions before we go? All right, very well, please join our faculty in the breakout rooms.